to and hopefully watching Dan and Phil. One BBC Radio One. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. It is a Monday night. At 9 p.m., you are listening to Dan and Phil on Radio One's Internet Takeover for the last time. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. We could have prepared a sound effect for that. I know. It's just a complete mess. I might cry on the desk and Hundreds break it. Hundreds of sound effects. Yep. In case you haven't heard, me and Phil are going on a hiatus from the radio whilst we go on a tour around the USA and we are dragging the Internet Takeover <laughs> down with us <laughs> in a sea of flames. Um, but do not fret because your Monday nights are in safe hands as it is going to be replaced by the Student Radio Playlist Show, which is all about playing mixes, showcasing the best of what's happening around the country. Yes. In Student Radio, which is a great idea, so do not weep. But tonight, we are going to do a little show reminiscing on some of our best bits over the years. Our favourite moments. There's a lot of things to watch, so make sure you get to bbc.co.uk forward slash radio one, where you will see that Dan has had his head grafted <laughs> onto the body of a lizard. Is it everything you like, it's gotten to the point where the things you say are so extreme that they're not even remotely true. I want people but, on the website. But how is that going to convince anyone to do it? It's obviously a lie. Look, yeah. Phil, since 2012, we've been telling people <laughs> to go watch the shows on the radio and website. Like, either they're going to or they're in a car it's and like, they just have no interest. So, a, you, know, you know what? If you don't want to watch it, that's fine. Whatever. <laughs> we tried. It's a boy that quiet wolf situation, though, isn't it? Because when you do get your head grafted onto a lizard, no one's no going to come one watch. No one will believe you. Yeah. So, we are going to kick off this show looking back on literally the first song that we played on the radio with our own choice which was kind of an audition in a way yeah in 2013 we were given the reins of the request show but because obviously we need to try really hard to do everything new we said hey let's make it a music video request show where people send in requests by making their own music videos and to do that we said we'd prove it by making our own video to muse yeah so this was like our own audition we had no sleep we filmed this music video in one night it's about dogs, it's about James Bond, and it's set to Muse. It's really weird. It's worth noting, this is what apparently convinced the bosses of Radio On to give us a job, which is really distressing, yeah, um, but so, you can judge it for yourself. So watch this on the website. Here is Muse Supremacy. <laughs>
Sue's supremacy with our 007 themed video. Do you know what I think I suit an eye patch? You you suit an eye patch? Yeah. What, might you just self-inflict something and wear it? Maybe. And you could be the next 007. Do you reckon you could do it? Mm, yeah. Everyone can imagine Dan rolling out of the way of an explosion, can't they? <laughs> You'd roll into I'd it. I'd be like, you, you know, oh, God, I can't be bothered to move. I'll just die <laughs> right now. That 2013 show was so unnecessarily mad. It Why was. did we try so hard to do many crazy things that people didn't care about? I don't know. I think I cried blood at one point. <laughs> and because it was the Crest show, we had live callers, which was just mad, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it I was. can't believe that in the whole time we did that show only one person swore live on the radio they swore when they were gargling i remember that much they were doing a gargling challenge and then they swore on the radio i was like oops sorry Kirsty they, didn't mean to say that they actually swore twice because they swore yeah. when they realized they'd swore and were about to apologize she said it. duck she said duck i promise yeah that's exactly what happened yeah that is what happened we, we did make her gargle singing so that was quite harrowing yeah now we've prepared a little something and i don't know why we're doing this to ourselves we thought it'd be funny to reflect on how far we've come by looking back on literally the first live link we ever did on oh, radio. Oh no! Now this, it was kind of quite horrific. It was wasn't horrifying. It? We had no idea what we were doing. We had about three days of radio experience. We were in this studio that looked like a battleship. It was absolutely crazy. Yeah. The camera in the room that was filming us had just fallen off its tripod it about fell off five tripod. seconds before. And we literally just finished talking to Jamila Jamil. Who's and she, and she wouldn't show. leave the room, would she? We were like, Jamila, we're about to start. This is our first ever radio show. She's like, it's going to be fine, boys. I'm going to tell you about the radio we were like oh no 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 so it'll be interesting to see how much of this fear made it into our eyes shall we have a look at our first ever live link well, on the radio let's have a look maybe phil should we tell the audience a bit more about who we are and why we're here yeah there like, are a few tweets saying who are you i can imagine that voice <laughs> so then amazing phil who are you and why are you so amazing Is my voice like what's up with that origin story but not that exciting phil origins <laughs> the boy in one bedroom and that's that's all that happens there's a camera in a laptop somewhere. you sound like you're well, helium it all started when i do video blogging puberty happened since then only girl 15 phil is like the dinosaur of the internet I, I, by I, the way I, I was the first one <laughs> and did anybody Anybody care about our YouTube origin story? I don't know. Definitely not. To notice me, okay? Did she ever notice you? No, but I did start making my own videos to try and get never. with the swing of it. She never noticed me. She never me. acknowledged your existence. Phil, you have a fringe gap. I just wanted to point oh, this out no. to you. I do now so as well. she broke your heart and made you never trust anyone ever again. I may have sort of just fallen in love with Lara Croft. Oh dear. Well, you know, my name Dan is not on fire, but a lot of people say, <laughs> don't mind me. Like, no, when I was 13 on my MySpace account, I was just a really random person. You did know? I just admit to being random and having MySpace? Oh no. I'm, I'm about to start crying. My face is falling off. One of those email addresses. <laughs> You know how everyone secretly called Sugar Bunny ninety six and yeah, like my that. first one was Snow one Dude. So I just was Shame. stuck with the name Dan is not unfair. <laughs> oh, and, and then we've been making YouTube videos ever since, video blogs, sketches, mm -hmm. stuff like that. And somehow Radio One have been like, Hey, have we've a show on the radio a couple of times, haven't we? <laughs> Wow. wow. A mistake, if I ever have heard one. That was just absolutely tragic. Yep. <sighs> and now we're going to continue the cringe attack no. as we have a video that we made back then to Nicki Minaj Starships. Can we, can we give them a bit of an explanation? I think we should play it and then give some context. We were really desperate for the BBC's approval back in the day. So we got a call from the chart show who said, Hey, Nicki Minaj Starships just started like charting, but it doesn't have a music video. Dan and Phil, you have <laughs> nothing better to do with your time. Make a music video. Yeah. So we were still in Manchester and we made this train wreck of a video that should not be on the internet, but it is I like just appreciate that we're actually showing this for you. I think I'm about to snap my neck from the cringe attack that I'm about to have. Here's Nicki Minaj with Starships.
Radio One now to watch the Dan and Phil show on Radio One. I actually have abs from cringing now. That, that hurt so much. That was the sound of regret yeah. going out across the nation's airwaves. And it's on the internet forever, Dan. I might, you know, after we've done with this show, just log into someone's account on the Radio One YouTube channel and delete that. <laughs> I might have to be wrestled. Delete to it forever. That from happening. Now, one thing that was with us on our radio show from the very beginning was Internet News, which was a feature that we actually borrowed from a little web series we did, but we felt like it needed to be on the radio. It did. It was a service that wasn't being provided to hear all these weird and strange news stories that no one else has reported on, like, what, what are all the cats doing? Yeah. How's robotics coming along? Or what face is in a strange <laughs> item of food this week? What is there somebody pooping in a bucket in a gaming cafe? Just all the things the world needs to hear. Who knows? So now, our final time time with the 3D glasses. <laughs> it's over to Dan and Phil in the news studio. This is the Internet News. Internet News. Our first story today is about the hot new tourist attraction of the summer here in Britain. What do you think it is, Phil? Pterodactyl World. That was the first thing that came to my head. No, but kind of close. Oh, really? Kind of. I mean, I don't know. It's the National Pooh Museum. Wow. That's what you were thinking. Sign me up. That is right. It is a museum exhibition that is all about studying different kinds of rare animal poo, including everything from elks to lions, or even fossilized poos dating back 100 million years. Wow. Maybe I mean, literally pterodactyls. If you ever go camping, you could track some beasts. That might be fun. You could indeed. It could have a practical application. Yeah. It is going to be in the Isle of Wight, so if you can't get all the way down there, don't cry because you can't see the poo because apparently it's going on tour later this year. Hey, maybe we could combine our tour with the poo tour. Yeah. That's that's a great idea. Business idea. The amazing poo is not in a museum. Okay, maybe not. That's a sellout right there. Internet news. Van drivers in Essex have had a lovely surprise after a mystery artist started drawing wonderful pieces of art on their vehicles. The artist, known only as Mr. Conjusha, is believed to have drawn on 10 vans in the Essex area so far. And to be clear to anyone listening that can't see pictures, this is just fingers through dirt. They I look mean, incredible. It's really sac- if they- I was- I saw this and I was like, oh, okay, this is gonna- damn, that's actually yeah. amazing. Like, how? He's sacrificing his cleanliness to just be an artist, which yeah. is impressive. He's believed to be 22 and spends about five minutes on each piece of art. I love that he's so mysterious. If anyone sat no, next to you, only as Mr. Conjusha, and yeah. yet he is 22 and spends five <laughs> minutes on each piece of art. If anyone sat next to you right now, look at their fingers and see if they're all a mysteriously grubby. grubby finger. He's either up to something really weird, or he's this artist yeah. down in Essex. Then you'll know. Hey, maybe it's Vincent Van Gogh. Eh? That's yeah? disgusting no? and unacceptable. <laughs> next one. Internet news. Hey, Phil. What? A horse walks into a bar, and what happens? What does the barman say? No, <laughs> literally, a horse walked into a bar in Sydney, Australia. What? Yeah, photos were caught of a police on a horse mount just walking into a bar because he wanted to speak with the person that owned the establishment. Why didn't he what? just get off the horse? I, I, mean, maybe. I mean, if you owned a bar and you're having a drink, imagine if you were sat there and you were yeah. having a rough day and you were just, you know, sat and you were like, okay, I'll do some shots or whatever. Horse walks in, you'd be like, oh, horse. God, no. I mean, Have I had that many already? Sometimes you just really want a drink. Don't you? I mean, you're like, I'm on my horse. I can't wait Don't to get off. To also, I've been on a horse. It's very hard to dismount. Maybe he was just stuck. It was a cry for help. Yeah, or maybe you just didn't want to get a parking ticket. <laughs> Asking the real questions here. <laughs> Internet news. And finally, we love seeing famous faces in everyday objects. It's what I live for. We've had Abraham Lincoln <laughs> in a chicken nugget. Mm. We've had John Lennon on a gatepost and Beyonce on a broom. That's not fave. There's a new one now. Elvis in a fire. Have a Check look at this. Check this out. That, that Uncanny. Is, that is terrifying. Elvis is clearly trapped in hell and is trying to send everybody a cry for help. I think so. He's back. <laughs> Elvis is back and he's in the flames. That was found by Stu Webb from Derbyshire who found that and decided to share it with the world. That, Thank you very much. That's the best one yet. Well, there we go. And that hope is real. was the internet news. We're going to start crying in a minute, so let's just leave while we're still professional. Ooh. Back to Dan and Phil in the studio. <laughs> The Internet News.
those guys are weird. I don't think anyone's going to miss them. Now, something we did on our old show was open the floodgates to the internet. We didn't just make music videos together. We let the internet collaborate with us. As a community on a music people video. that watched the show, we banded together to make incredible music videos with hundreds of people. That was sometimes a mistake. We got some pretty weird stuff in that inbox. Sometimes. Oh, I mean, yeah. If you yeah. think the videos we made are weird, you don't want to see what we sent that didn't get made into it. Like, oh, wow. We saw some guy doing something unusual with the banana, but I won't say what. It was, it was very strange. The truth is so less bad than anything <laughs> you just implied by saying that. Why didn't you think that through? I don't know why I didn't What actually that happened is... So, oh, wow. Yeah. Let's move on quickly. Moving on. One of my favourite videos that we made with you guys, the listeners, was a video that collaborated everything that is the essence of this show. I wanted to choose a really left-field song, and I didn't know if we'd be allowed to play it, but it got through. We just did that all the time. You probably all know the words. So here is... The Pokemon theme on Radio 1. On, on Radio 1. You are very welcome for that song choice. So, among the plethora of features, plethora, right, that's a good word. If you just said plethora, it? that's a strong meaty. If I played that in Scrabble, the people you'd be playing with would be like nerd. Yeah, don't want to play anymore. Well, XO isn't a word. I hate playing with you. Yeah. So, one of those included Fan Wars, which was Fan Wars. Idea. 
Thanks, Phil. You're Back welcome. in the day, to pit fans of various bands and artists against each other live on the radio for the right to request their artist song. Yeah, they had to play various games. We had gargling. We had a noise treasure hunt, which I invented, where they had to run all over the house and find different noises. That was really dangerous. That was so dangerous. Sometimes we were like, where's the toilet? Downstairs! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Are you still alive, Sophie? Yeah. And this okay. was the scariest part for me because I was in charge of the phone callers. So I had to choose who we had and then I spoke to them, had to make sure they don't swear and they don't choke on the water that they're about to gargle with. But we have a, a fun little reminder of some of our favourite Fan Wars moments. So here it is now. We're going to speak to Kira now. Maybe the house will collapse or something. We hope that. Kira, you have 54 seconds to beat. How do you feel? Pumped. Excited. Pumped, Pumped and excited. Good. Great. Are you ready? Sound confident. Okay, three, two, one, go. Turn on a tap. I want to hear the water pouring. <laughs> oop, oop. Kitchen oop. sounds. <laughs> Are you going to the I tap? The tap on. I can hear that. Oh, I, I can hear, hear rustling. Yeah. Okay, next sound, next sound. Okay, next sound. I want you to get a family member to squawk like an eagle. No other bird will do. <laughs> Whoa! That was a whole. It's a flock of eagles. It's a flock of it's eagles. A tune of eagles. Okay. okay. <laughs> now I would like you to go into the kitchen and drop three spoons on the floor. I want to hear each impact of each spoon. <gasps> That's so specific. One, two, two three. Slam. Stop. Okay. Ooh. Hope you didn't damage your kitchen floor with those I'm spoons. I'm a violent person. It's okay. It sounded like you were throwing them as hard as you could. You haven't hurt your yeah. kitchen floor, have you? No. Uh, Maybe. <laughs> Maybe, but that's not what's important. It's important that you win okay, Fan Wars. So okay. what, what's, the, what's the time for Kira, Dan? I can reveal that the time for Kira representing Macklemore in this week's Fan Wars is 41.5 seconds, meaning that this week Macklemore wins Fan Wars. <laughs> Congratulations, Kira. <laughs> Totally destroyed that kitchen, didn't you? You heard the danger right there. We I were know. asking people to vandalise their own homes just to get a song on the radio. That's how much <laughs> dedication they had. It was it was some good times, <laughs> even if it was emotionally harrowing for us. Yeah, definitely. And then there was Dan versus Phil, where we Dan decided... versus Phil. Do you really? I'm just going to do that for everything we talk about. This, now. Is, this can be your side career of Radio One. Don't I'm going to be the back. new X Factor voice in September. Um, Dan versus Phil was where we attempt physically degrading challenge on air over two songs back to back. Yeah, it, it was probably some of the most embarrassing things I've ever done, and millions of people were watching every this single the best way. Sunday. We have put together a little montage of some of our most embarrassing slash hilarious moments. So if you're not watching on the website, you're going to miss out on some grade A cringe right now. That's proper good. So here is, to accompany it, I think a very appropriate song, MCR.
My Chemical Romance, I am not okay, and I definitely wasn't after those incidents. Dad and Phil on BBC Radio 1. So you know how Bake Off has creme de la creme? Yeah, the posh version Well, the cr- worse. <laughs> the creme de la creme of Dan versus Phil's was definitely <laughs> the sleeping bag caterpillar challenge. That was a fantastic way of introducing that. Basically, we had to climb into sleeping bags and race each other across the floor without using our hands. If you want to ruin your life, try that with a friend. Uh, <laughs> I think it, it was, it, to this day, the lowest moment of yeah. my career, so, physically and metaphorically. If you've got a lowest moment of your career, the best thing to do is to relive it and react to it. So I've got a clip of it here. I thought this was supposed to be a best of, Phil. It's just a cringe <laughs> compilation. Let's have a watch of this clip and see how we got on. Okay, here we go. I'm you getting into the <laughs> I'm getting into the sleeping bag. Oh no, I look like I'm about to escape. I'm a butterfly about to emerge. We were literally desperately crawling across the floor of the Radio on Green Room. So many carpet burns. People with people were just walking in with whatever was on the bottom of their shoes. Lady okay. Gaga's cheesecake on the floor just exactly. writhing through just it. Getting your face all over the crumbs. Yeah. Oh, here you go, Dan, as well. Uh, this was just so embarrassing. <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe we actually did this live I on know. the radio. Oh, it hurts so much. Because who needs dignity for any reason, right? It's the Dan and Phil way. That's the Sleeping Bag Caterpillar Challenge. Try it at home. That's on YouTube, if you want to search it. Most of the Dan vs. Phil's we've ever done still are to this day, which is just horrific. But thankfully, yeah. they weren't all embarrassing challenges, as some of them were quite creative, including the finale we did, which was to make music videos against each other. Yes. It was a competition, and Phil won, because he of put on a jacket and made himself look like Jack Skellington and played Fallout Boy. It's called pandering <laughs> to so the crowd, you feel a bit bitter, Dan, about no, that? It's just fine. a little I'm, bit. I'm over it, but here is the artistic masterpiece, which was my most spectacular video of all time, Wonder Direction with That's What Makes You Beautiful. Your direction, That's What Makes You Beautiful with so many selfies, including kind of fetus Zoe and Tyler Oakley. They look so young, didn't they? With their dirty faces. Did you faces. just say that and then regret using the F word? Fetus. I, I think you did. Slightly. So slightly. Cheaper. Anyway, part of our job as internet losers involved <laughs> being thrust into the world of celebrities and having to make videos with them, which is always a strange clash. Dad and Phil, go to this event and just make some videos with some celebrities. Go meet like, Taylor uh, Swift. Oh, God. I had a Sharpie in my hand when I gave her a hug. I actually hugged Taylor Swift. Thank you, Radio 1. And I almost drew on her probably million-pound dress at the same time. You almost Sharpieing Taylor. That was one yeah, of my th- personal highlights. That was a good highlight. What's one of your highlights? Uh, one of my my highlights was rubbing Liam Payne's head when he just got it shaved. Never mind fetus YouTubers. You got to stroke fetus Liam's stubbly head I when did. he shaved his hair. Like a prickly hedgehog. Anyway, we have a little montage of some of our favourite celebrity moments. So here it is. Featuring no less than Snoop Dogg, Taylor Swift, 1D and Fallout Boy, this is a little version of Dan and Phil versus celebrities. Nice to meet you, Snoop Dogg. <laughs> Hi, Dan. Hey, how are you doing? Oh, yeah. really? Thank Good pick. No worries. <laughs> So I just shook hands with Snoop Dogg. If anyone wasn't watching on the website, you missed out on that one. That was Snoop Dogg taking some photos of flowers. And us. You just took some photos of us. You're you're like a beautiful flower, Phil. Oh, thanks, Dan. We're now joined by Taylor Swift. Hello. Hello. (laughs) If anything could happen between now and this time next year, what would it be? Anything in the world. Well, okay, so we have five shows at the O2 in February. Mm I'd really like for them to go really well. Yeah, that, brilliant. What's the thing you would least awesome. like to happen between now and this time next year? Just utter chaos, destruction, and everyone the hating me. The world ending. Yeah. Really bad as well. That would be Fair terrible. Enough. One Direction, who do you think Harry has drawn? Himself. Well, uh, yeah. yeah. Himself. I think it's average. average. Is that right? Yeah. Yay. Okay, is there anyone else at yours? Oh, who's that? Mm, Niall. Niall. The Niall. Niall. That's no. No. What does it say? Zane. I love, I love me. Ah. <laughs> we are here with Fallout Boy. Hello. Or half of Fallout Boy. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Patrick, five. how are you doing? I'm good, how are you doing? Very good. I'm Pete. I'm great. Now, everyone on Twitter is asking me, before we start the interview, I have to tell them what you guys smell like. So they can have I just take a bit of a sniff? That. I would say they smell like manly flowers. Oh, Phil! I, everyone was asking me to sniff Pete Wentz, so if I had to do it. If the internet asks you to sniff the internet, Pete Wentz, that's not something you have to oblige. I know. Have we learned anything by now? No. But it wasn't all harrowing, was it? We had no. some good times, and we even had a music video made of some of the good times that we had at Radio One's big weekend. Oh, yeah. That was put together. This made your mum cry. My mum cried watching this, this video. played this on the radio, and Phil got a text saying, <laughs> I'm, I'm crying! I'm crying watching that Bruno Mars montage! <laughs> Sorry, mum. Uh, 
So if you're not on bbc.co.uk forward slash radio on, come and watch this video and you can cry like my mum with nostalgia for Big Weekend. Here is Bruno Mars with Locked Out Heaven. Locked out of heaven with us at Big Weekend. Are you crying like your mum did, Phil? I've got a little teary man building up in my eye. <laughs> good memories. Good memories. Another memory is also Reading Festival. That was a big we, one for us. We did some similar things. But the most terrifying thing that we had to do <laughs> was introduce Imagine Dragons on stage. No we were, pressure there. We were kind of excited because we were like, oh, cool, we get to introduce a band. I grew up in Reading, so I was just like hyperventilating the whole time I was there working. Yeah. However, <laughs> I've never used a microphone before on a stage like that, so I didn't know that you just use your normal voice. So I was screaming into this microphone. The, the concept of microphones was a bit lost on Phil. It was so lost he on me. came out and basically tried to be loud enough to hear himself over 60,000 people in the Radio 1 tent. Yeah, so here is me screaming and introducing Imagine Dragons with Dan. Just so you know, this is one of the worst memories of my life. Here we go. Hello. We are Dan and Phil from Radio 1. <laughs> You're looking particularly moist today. Go I said the M word. Sorry, okay. Now everyone, close your eyes and picture 
<laughs> a flaming mythical beast. Beast? Really? Yeah. It's now time for Imagine Dragon. Go make it. Oh, oh. I was shouting so much. I hate God. I mean, how do you feel about that? I'm proud of young Phil. I'm like, go on. That's that's brave to go and stand Close in front of your eyes and picture a flaming mythical beast. Probably scared them all off. The but, thought but, was that, there. That was no crowd warm up, was it? Uh, so yeah, there we go. That was that was quite traumatizing. Thankfully though, the weekend was saved as 15 year old Dan's wildest dreams came true. We got to be in a music video with Fall Out Boy. We actually lip synced with Fall Out Boy for another montage. This is from Reading Festival. Here is My Songs Know What You Did in the Dark. Boy, my songs know what you did in the dark. Now, another feature that we put on the radio, turning a much beloved internet game, is something that you created, Phil. I gave birth to this game on the internet. So many people have played it now. I'm quite happy about it. You're good. Would you like to explain the concept? Basically, you have to do whatever the other person says in seven seconds. It's a very simple game. It is called the seven <laughs> second challenge. Boom. Boom. And what we're playing for is the right to play a strange song that we usually probably wouldn't be allowed to play on Radio 1. Yeah, and this is like the season finale of the 7 Second Challenge. Because this is a season. Yeah, we've been level pegging. Do you reckon? I yeah. mean, one of us probably... I, there was like a four-month period where I didn't win in I, a row. Well, this is it. This is all or nothing, glory or your face in the gutter. Which is a, a thing that no one says. It's a well-known but it's, saying, it's glory happening. or your face in the gutter. <laughs> Which one of us should go first? I don't know. You can go first, because you made it. All right, okay. Why did you agree to that? I don't know. What is wrong with you? Right, Phil. Yes. Your challenge is to change the colour of the lights in the studio. Go! I can do this. I know how this works. Does okay. he? Is he going to press... Mm. is now green. Okay, yes. okay, okay. 
Very well done. I did it with like three seconds to spare. Oh, oh wow. No one likes a boaster, Phil. Green's quite intense, isn't it? That's a really disgusting colour. Yeah. Green is my least favourite colour. Let's get back to the business, Dan. Just putting that out there. I'm ready. Make up a... Oh, I need my ding. Well, give me a ding. <laughs> there we go. You can't ding don't yourself. Miss out. I ding myself if you don't ding me. <laughs> right. <laughs> Next one is make up a rap about <laughs> Radio 1. <laughs> no. Uh, Radio 1, it's really great. The best thing about it is that I do it with my mate words. Ooh. Ooh. That was annoyingly good. I, I mean, I slapped you on the shoulder while saying the word mate. That's I'm, really yeah, horrifying. That... <laughs> I'm sorry. I feel like I appropriated I'm gonna, I'm gonna, something by I'm saying I'm going to give you a ding anyway. Give me that ding, Phil. There, you there go. we go. Sweet. Right. You ready for the next one? No, but I'm going to try my best. This is like a Dan Howell friendship test. Okay. I'm putting... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> go on. Phil, name three Kanye albums. Go. The Life of Pablo. Yep. Uh... Oh my god, my mind's gone blank. Oh, Kanye. <laughs> my dark, beautiful, twisted fantasy. And, and... Oh, I don't know, that's too hard. <sighs> Phil. Oh. I think this is the end... That's it. ...of our friendship. Oh, oh, oh right, the seven seconds. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Of course. Uh, uh, no, I want you to do mine, though. Say five things you would never put in your mouth. Go. <laughs> Your hand, the microphone, my own face, my grandma's foot, my phone. Oh, what? You would have failed that as well. That I got really that cool. in. I got my phone in in time. Oh, okay. You were going to ask me that live <laughs> on the radio. You're playing a dangerous game, Phil Lester. Right. I, I feel lose. like it's only right that I won. It's like a rite of passage. And now mess. I get to play the best song of all time on the radio. For the last People time. say, hey, Dan, didn't you run this joke into the ground? Didn't it stop getting funny sometime in 2014? No, it gets funnier. It's like a what's something that gets better? It's like a fine wine, a fine that's cheese, green and lives in a swamp. You are blessed.
All star again. Smash mouth because I won the seven second challenge. Well done. Dan and Phil on BBC Radio One. So there we go. That's it for our little pre hiatus show. We hope you've enjoyed reflecting on some of our best bits. It literally it was just a cringe compilation. It was, it was a compilation of cringe. There's there's plenty of things we've done that are like really impressive, but for some reason we just decided to share these things. Yeah. Maybe you feel a bit better about yourself having laughed at us. Maybe for a solid hour live on the radio. But I have loved every moment of it. Really. <laughs> Don't fear that we'll be gone because you can enjoy that student radio show whilst we're on a bus in America crying because there's no Wi-Fi. Yeah. I mean, thank that, you. That, that's gonna be what we're doing. It's it? gonna be what we're doing. Thank you, everyone who has <laughs> listened to the internet takeover. And now it is time for the single most played song that we've ever had. I, on I, show, I, I think. actually think this is the song we've played the most. It's on like our the radio anthem show. of us on Radio One, isn't it? It's very symbolic. Like, Phil, do you want to give us an example of how to do that intro? Oh, you can't maybe do just the, one the last voice. time. Okay, Come here we go. You, you can do it. Mm, baby, can you see? <laughs> that sounded like her, right? Mm. You, you, you do it. You try it. Oh, mm. stop. Baby, stop. Catch okay, I, we cannot leave quickly enough. I'm sorry, everybody. We have been Dan and Phil. And to close out, here is Britney Spears with Toxic on BBC Radio 1. Bye. Goodbye.